So I took a picture of this guy on 0.5 surreptitiously. And when I got home that night, I put it into the Google Lens, image reverse searched it, couldn't find anything. He can't really be that famous then. So then I went to another website <laughs> that night, which is like a, a facial detection feature. <laughs> it was coming up with a hinge profile. Oh. oh, that's the police coming to get me. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Hi, guys. Welcome back to Tier 4. I'm Lauren. <laughs> and this is a podcast where we talk all things that normally stay in the group chat. Uh. Except the group chat today is me and producer Bobby. Uh. Um, yeah, cricket. Sorry. Christy's actually living up in Bar- Barbados and we're here in East London. Yeah. Um, so... So today we give you the solo podcast episode that no one asked for. <laughs> and I think that's fine because some of my best um, podcasters that I watch are, you know, solo talkers. Like they'll go on for an hour mm. talking to their self, vibing off that. So I guess my challenge to you is sit and last 10 minutes, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> that's all right. I feel like this is you living out your teenage dream, though. This, this is, is what it? I did in my bedroom. Yeah, when literally. I was, when I was 15. Yeah. Pretend I have a podcast. Yeah. In the mirror. Really? Well, podcast a YouTube, a YouTube, a YouTube. YouTube, channel. yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is the 2024 version. It is. It's pretty iconic, if you ask me. Um, but let's not make a habit of it, eh, hey, Christy? You come back here. So, I've got some, let's say, disordered thoughts that I've got to bring up this week. First off... Um, I'll I'll give you some backstory about the past bank holiday weekend I've just had. Um, what I can only describe as walking into a simulation in Battersea Park. I mean, this, this is probably going to hit a very niche audience. But basically, there is this place in Clapham slash Battersea. I don't know where the fuck I was. But one I walked into it and I was in Battersea. And then the other side, I'm in Clapham. I don't get it. And everyone there looks like they're from Ra. Where's my backy Clapham? <laughs> and I walk into this area and I thought, this is exceptionally busy. And there's a queue. I thought it was for the Chelsea Flower Show. Everything's in bloom. But what am I missing? Flowers. There is not a flower or a petal around. There's just bare clapping people and they are all queuing up for something. It's just a row of benches. I didn't know what the it was. And me and my friend were just there like, this feels like we've walked into something we were not supposed to. And everyone's just in the queue and they're vibing and like people were queuing for hours and just everyone sat on the grass. And I know this just sounds like a like a park scenario, but there was something very sinister about it. Very sinister about it. I don't know but like we were just we were just trying to work out what it was and then on the way home it starts happening it's infiltrating my for you page on tiktok all of the content on my for you page is the pear tree cafe clapham everyone's singing dancing everyone making videos from the queue in just to get into a row of benches i don't know it just felt very off and very sinister there music like is it live music yeah there was live music oh and people are sat and people were sat but I don't know, there was just something, something off. Is there not two as well? Because I actually weirdly tried to book it, like, two days ago. I I've think one's the cafe and then one's another cafe where, like, the rich people have rosé. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know. But as I say again, this is going to hit a very niche audience. But it's just so ironic how you walk into something, you don't know what the fuck's going on. And then five minutes later, your TikTok's heard you going, <laughs> where am I? And then it's showing me every single video from the Pear Tree Cafe in Clapham. And I was scared. Anyway, after that, we go to a pub, me and my friend, with her dog, and we're sat next to these group of people. And now I am a massive um, celeb spotter, so um, I always have my eyes peeled, you know, in those kind of areas, because that's near Chelsea, so we could get some, you know, micro-influencers, as you'd say, like me. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> and um, we were sat next to these people um, having a drink, and there was this guy on the table sat opposite, and I was like, I know his face. I know his face. And sometimes in my in my heart, I can't tell if someone's famous or if they're from the Isle of Wight. Like, <laughs> there's such a fine line. And, and I was looking at this guy and it was, I couldn't even concentrate on the conversation I was having with my friend. So I take a picture of this guy on 0.5, you know, and I use my favourite feature on my whole phone, the Google Lens app. What? Um, What's that? You're not on the Google app and you can take a photo. You have an iPhone? Yeah, I've got an iPhone. What's this look like? <laughs> what do you mean, what do you mean the Google Lens app? What is this? The Google, so on the Google app, 
Sponsored. Hashtag sponsored. No. <laughs> on the Google app, you can put in an image and then it will like search back everything that's like to oh. do with that. So like if I see a top or something that I like on Vinted, I'll print screen that and put it into Google. So I can boom as explained print Google screen. lens. <laughs> <laughs> print and screen, screen grab literally screen grab so I took a picture of this guy on 0.5 surreptitiously and when I got home that night I put it into the Google lens image reverse searched it couldn't find anything I was thinking well he can't really be that famous then yeah. so then I started piecing together the details that I've overheard in a conversation there was a dog there called Dusty I'm <laughs> typing in made in Chelsea picture of him dog called Dusty nothing's coming up so then i went to another website that <laughs> night which is like a, a facial detection feature <laughs> a facial detection software <laughs> um that i put in a picture of this man it was quite pixelated so i've really got to give my ha hat off to him <laughs> and it showed me every picture on the internet of this man who now I've discovered wasn't famous. I think he was just a normal man. But this facial detection software was showing pictures from like a wedding website of like a, a photographer who obviously had like stock images. And this guy, it was coming up everything. It was coming up with a hinge profile. Oh, oh that's the police coming to get me. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm a freak. Yeah, and it was showing a hinge profile. It was showing a LinkedIn post. Um, but then I had to pay twenty pounds to click on the link to go th straight through to it. So, did you? Uh, no. <laughs> That's when I realised I had to call it a day, and I've got issues. So. Oh, you facial detecting? Him. Yeah. Well, it him reverse in bed that night. Looking at your <laughs> image on <in> Google. <laughs> and it was amazing because it really was the most pixelated, but um, blurry image. So, wow. that's great. So that was my weekend nice. of interesting activities. Get a life. <laughs> um, the next thing, um, been on my radar this week, is Wii, the Wii, Nintendo Wii. I've been absolutely chuffing, loving it. So my boyfriend has just bought back a Wii Sports. And I don't know if something's clicked in my head that I'm compensating for the fact I'm not going to the gym. But sticking on a couple of Wii bowling, Wii, Wii baseball, <laughs> Wii tennis, I th I'm really hitting my macros. What they're called? That's not my, that's, that's my nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really hitting my, what's it, base level fitness? What? What's it called? Like burning my calories? That'll work. Yeah, that'll do. I'm really burning my calories for the week, um, which is an issue. But I'm weirdly exceptional at wee bowling. Are you? Yeah. There's an awful video of my technique. Maybe we'll insert it here. Nice. Um, but, no, I'm not going to say that because that's trauma. Anyway. <laughs> Very um, 2009 of you. Yeah, very get, 2009. Get back in the Wii. Well, I think we all should do it. <laughs> Bring it back. Bring it back. Yeah, okay. It's like that little action of a nunchuck. And, I, and also this week, I watched Challengers. Oh, yeah. Which is quite tennis-based. So, mm. you know, me me being a me on Wii Sports, you know, with my <laughs> backhands, swinging a nunchuck about really makes me feel like Zendaya. So. Yeah, nice. That's fair. Um, but no, something that's disgusting about that is I actually watched the challenges in four parts. Why? Attention span. <laughs> uh, oh. I don't know. I don't know what it is about watching a film. Actually, I do know what it is. Watching a film before bed, aka the most illuminating, bright, stimulating screen in front of my eyes, my head on a landscape angle, I'm not staying awake for longer than five minutes. Mm. It doesn't matter what's on that TV. Yeah. I'm... Police, police coming again. again. <laughs> Sleep police. That's outrageous. Um, Only two hours long. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, two hours long that whole film is. Um, yeah, I watched it four parts. And I love watching things in parts on TikTok. The other day I did one, like, 36 parts. Easy. Damn. Um, oh, okay. So we've got to bring up something next. What's been in the news recently, Bob's telling you about it, the National Service. Mm. So Rishi Sunak is calling up uh, all 18 year olds to serve in the national service um, when they turn 18 if he gets through if he gets through to the, to the next round <laughs> if he gets through to the final <laughs> if he gets through to the semi-finals on X Factor um, is, no is so that actually legit like, is that it's actually legit so it's firstly actually I will say when I looked this up I somehow found Rishi's birth date <laughs> awful news 12th of May 
one day <gasps> after mine. Oh no. We do not claim that Taurus energy. Oh no. So rude of him. Um, but yeah, so he wants 18 year olds to um, go into a full time placement in the armed forces or volunteer, 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 volunteer in their community. And obviously, this goes on social media. People start having a bit of fun with it, calling it the Nashi Serve. The same vibe as Cossie lives. He's probably sat behind his phone, like, cackling like Mr Burns. <laughs> yeah. Like, he just knows that he's got us. He's like, haha, I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit of, you know, um, preparing for war. Yeah, um, what, what And then we just take the about? piss out of it. <sighs> it just doesn't make us look very good, guys. Something's um, coming. And it's just quite a mad concept to me. Like, when I think about being 18, being at uni, like, I was paying, be, we're all paying like nine grand a year to go to uni and I still couldn't go to my lectures. And you think I'm fitting in like 10 hot, <laughs> one, two, left, right, left in there as well. It's not happening, babe. Um, I just don't vibe with that. Or Would you, you go, go Bobs? No, no, you no. Go, you go national service? No, the femini- feminism is leaving my body if that ever happens, yeah. I'm not going. But then you also have to volunteer every weekend for a year. I've I've got plans. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to the Pear Tree for? Cafe, mate. <laughs> I'm, going to, <laughs> I'm going to Pear Tree Cafe in the queue, right? Makes TikToks. Oh god. And what do you even wear? Like, I don't suit a low bun, and I no. think that's what you wear in the military. <laughs> low buns only. Low buns only. Slick back buns. <laughs> my hairline ain't doing it. So, Rishi, let me have my curls. So I go Pear Tree Cafe later. <laughs> So that's peak for 18 year olds. We were saying it's like, what, how does it work? Like if you've already been 18, like are you making it up in time or? <laughs> I'm not doing that, sorry. Busy. I'm exempt. That's it, 10 years. We're, we're 10 years ahead of the curve. That's depressing. Thank God. Yeah. I haven't been 18 for a decade. That's I think we're all right. Yeah, I we're, think we're right. too old now. <laughs> my bones will be creaking. Um, also, oh, something that's coming to my realm. So obviously we had the whole conscious four season baby have you seen it no nope. orlando the baby on tiktok <laughs> no are you joking <laughs> no one in the you're all under a rock yeah i think it's maybe, like yeah. it's the baby that goes um are you going to f- um who's excited to go to the four seasons orlando and the, the the conscious baby says me the conscious baby how have you not seen this anywhere 34 million views Why is this ra- why is this racking up views though? Exactly. And this has been brought into my fears. I fear children are peaking too early <laughs> at this rate. Like this baby this week has been doing photo shoots at the Four Seasons in a bathrobe, <laughs> eating breakfast. <laughs> and it's like I think it's just getting younger and younger when I think about the age of like successful babies on the internet. We've got like David goes dentist, yeah. Charlie bit my finger. Yeah. This baby's just come out of the womb. <laughs> you can do it. It's just learnt to sit his spine upwards and it is <laughs> worrying me. Um, so so we need to stop making these babies babies famous. He's cause barely it's, lived. It's a level of child stardom that I don't think they're ready for. <laughs> However, I can relate to this because I was Boots Baby of the Year in 1996. Claim. Huge. I don't know if this is just like a regional Isle of Wight thing or if it was just <laughs> Are you a, sure? a, a nationwide. <laughs> there's nothing on the internet, but we don't look. <laughs> don't embarrass me like that. But there's a certificate on my wall at home and it's Aww. Boots Baby of the Year 1996 is awarded to Lauren Kirkland. I don't know what I did to deserve that. But yeah, I just think we've really got to consider baby's mental health, like you know, imposter syndrome and stuff, because that, that boots really made my head blow up. Big boots certificate. Would you, would you let your baby... Would I let? Would I let my baby what? <laughs> would, you, would you let <laughs> your baby? Famous, like if your baby became a baby influencer. Oh, baby influencer! It's a hard one. Baby influencer. I would say that is such an ick. Yeah, I don't know. Like I say, I just I think it just sets a precedent for the rest of their life. It's like there people always going to be waiting for the next you know viral moment from my and baby influencer. Yeah, constantly disappointed. Um, but then it made me start thinking about in school. Did you ever used to have gifted and talented? Yes. Oh my god, when you weren't picked for that, it was oh so my god. sad. All but my friends going to gifted and talented. Really? Were you not a? I went once. You went once. Uh, I don't know. You just get to mix with other people. I feel like I built like a Lego once. 
<laughs> really? Yeah, I feel like I did like a, a stop motion film. That's what all I remember doing. Oh my God. Gifted and talented. It is quite ironic how you're like overperforming and they're like, let's take them out of lessons. Let's have them do something completely irrelevant and build Lego. <laughs> Lego. But on the Isle of Wight, our thing was if you're in gifted and talented, you could go to the school over the other side of the island and learn how to play steel pans. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, they were like, Lauren, what? you're sick at English. You're pretty good at maths. Get her on Science, the- smashing it. Get her on the pans. Get her. Someone get this girl <laughs> on the steel pans immediately. I like, can't. <laughs> she looks wasted like- potential. Uh, she's, we're just, there's a star. We're breeding Ooh, a star. What is going on in the Isle of Wight that that was their gift and I know. I know. I imagine they did yeah. find the, the 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 best steel pan player in the world, though. Like, fair. Maybe that's what they were looking for. Yeah, it's someone is telling me. Someone telling me it's not going to come from a, a school of white children in the Isle of Wight. <laughs> like, what's it? Year three? I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, so yeah, that's what I call transferable skills, because you know. That's what, that's, what, that's what it was teaching me back then. <laughs> iconic, iconic. Um, two more things. Oh, this week I made a handshake with my boyfriend. Aww. And I think we should bring that back. I love that. Because it's really sweet. It's giving like parent trap. And he's going to hate me for saying that on the internet. But it was just so sweet and so bonding. And like we were sat in the park and had the <laughs> climb by Miley Cyrus playing on the speaker. And we just, we just like put this little handshake together. And then uh, I was like, oh, let me just film this, you know, for like just memory. So we remember the handshake. And then as soon as the camera went on, it was like, oh, what's this fucking song doing on? What's this? And he put it on about five seconds later, earlier. Lol. How embarrassing. He's so embarrassed by the camera. Yeah, he's so You've embarrassed. really found your soulmate, haven't you? <laughs> Truly, yeah. Get you someone that you can Make can handshakes play with. handshakes with. How long was it? Um, sorry, let me do it ahead. <laughs> Joking. How about it? Lauren was. <laughs> Lauren, I'm, I've got something to tell you. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, that was a joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it's still pans, isn't it? It was none of that. It was the, the emotional. My, my the... boyfriend made me make up a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> How'd it go? No, a handshake, like inside jokes. As soon as the camera went on, he went all shy, did he? Yeah. Can yeah. <laughs> you explain that joke to the audio Oh, the audio, yeah. So I was just making some really inappropriate. <laughs> um, just imagine still pan sticks, just that to the side of my head. Um, <laughs> well, maybe this should be his call to action to come watch us on YouTube. Yeah. Join the three other people that will watch it. My mum, my nan from heaven and you. You. <laughs> um, oh, and the final one is uh, I need to talk about something really get off my chest. Um, I've been struggling with a lot of guilt lately, um, and no one seems to talk about it online. It's called Invisalign guilt, <laughs> and I'm halfway through my journey, and I see all these videos on TikTok of being like, "Oh yeah, I've really stuck to it. I've been amazing. I'm so bad with it. I don't want my dentist to watch this," but like. I'll ha- you're supposed to have them in like 20 hours a day and I just keep leaving them out and then leave them out for the whole day 20 hours? 20 hours of the day and like at the beginning I was such like a goody goody with it and I was always like brushing my teeth and putting it back in but it's laborious it's so boring of course I want perfect teeth but they need to like shorten that that's shorten a lot that of, time that's span. a lot of hours it's a lot of hours to put in for something isn't it? that's the whole day what about braces? did you do braces? I've already had braces <laughs> They took them after 11 months. It was so random. Yeah. And I only put them on my top teeth. So, sorry, this isn't a fucking tooth chat. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so something I just used to get off my chest. I have really bad Invisalign guilt. And if you um, can relate, please write in the comments. Let's start a fan group. Joking, let's just put our fucking teeth in. <laughs> um, I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Love. Did you want to talk to me about anything? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Therapy sesh. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I've got a big issue at the moment, actually. I'm going to use the podcast to bring it up. There's no one's talking about it. What? The price of olive oil. How m- oh, my God, Bobby. What Thank is- God you said it. What is going on? And I'm not even joking. Every time I've been in the shops, I just stare at the shelves trying to find the cheapest. And then multiple people will come up behind me. And every single person comes up and goes, fucking £8 for an yeah. olive oil. Can't yeah. believe it. Everyone. 
what's going on? Well, I had to do the unthinkable the other day. You know how, like, when you're at the bottom of the shower gel, you add water to it to just make it last a bit <laughs> <Yeah>. longer? <laughs> Catch me in the fucking kitchen doing the same with my olive oil. What? Did you add water? Yeah. <laughs> just to make it go that extra bit further. I'm not paying £8 for olive it oil. It Yeah. How'd you do that? It's outrageous. Maybe we need to go back to, like, old times and just start making it ourselves from the olives. How easy is that? I don't really? know. How would you make olive oil? Yeah. No, I don't know an olive tree. Where'd you get olive jars? No, but I've got olives from the shop. They're only about 89p, so where they're going 89p to £8. Yeah. How many olives do you need to make a full bottle of olive oil, though? You know, by the time you've bought enough jars, are you better off just buying the olive oil for £8? That sounds like a GCSE maths question. <laughs> instantly, instantly, I went into trauma triggered mode and I switched off. It's a Cosy Lives GCSE maths yeah. question. Cosy Lives. <laughs> How I'm many. Olives. How many olives can Do make an need? olive oil because the cost of living is bringing it up to eight pounds? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a really good point to bring up, Bobby. Thank you for you know giving us the platform to to speak about these issues. Speak about these issues. Yeah, it's what it's all about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone. Well, thank you for joining us on this solo episode. It's probably quite long. Woo! I like to talk. Bye. Yeah,